These are cast iron reindeer that Mrs. W and I came across in a little artist shop in Pike Street, it's a Pike, Pike Street Market up in Seattle on a uh, anniversary trip uh, that we took up there. It's a place where they throw the fish. I think it's Pike, Pike Street Market up in Seattle. And we bought two and we had these in our old house. Both of us just really, really enjoyed them. Like, love the colors and the cast iron and they're kind of a replica of a really old I've seen old, old versions of these. These are obviously replicas of that. I love the colors. We ended, we ended up buying two, and they were, uh, we had them by our front door at the old house, uh, and we'd hang our keys and hats and different things on them. So I, I pulled these out, and I realized, well, two's not enough. You know, that's not gonna make a proper coat rack, especially for the entry. What's the chance that I could find these? <laughs> I couldn't remember the name of the market or anywhere. So we got online, and I started looking. And guess what I found? The new reindeer just arrived. I'm gonna take these out of the boxes. Hopefully they're the same. We'll see them together here for the first time. But I thought the chance of those matching up color-wise, that's impossible, so I ordered enough that we can make it just from this alone without these. Goodness, these were hard to find. I was absolutely shocked when I found the picture. All right, we have a red one. Oh, they're a little bit, they're a little bit different, aren't they? Yeah, they are different. This one's bigger. It has a different ear on it, a little bit longer snout, but that's all right. That's why I ordered, what about the color? I wanted the, the two different colors. Let's see if, let's pull out a blue one. So this is going to be a big old W for, for me because you guys know our ladies, they can be sentimental about, especially about anniversaries and things. And so when I make this and surprise her with it, and then I tell her how I was inspired by the wonderful time we had on our anniversary trip, well, I'll have my reward. All right, there we have it. They're a little bit different, but that's okay. We'll put these over, maybe we'll put these over in the shop and we'll just go with the new ones. That's why I was thinking ahead. Now typically, as a professional homeowner, I wouldn't have thought ahead that far. But for some reason, I don't know, maybe it was divine intervention. I had access to that superpower that's so elusive to me in the ability to plan. We ended up with eight cast iron rain reindeer. We've got four blue and four red. And if we consult our field notes here, I did some measurements in the foyer, and what we need for a base, we need something really pretty, something quarter sawn, of course, clear dug fur, right? In my haste to cut out that giant billet for the outdoor table, this was a quarter sawn piece that I just flopped off and discarded as I was trying to get that, that 10 inches. Well, I pulled these out and I was cutting stuff up for firewood, and I just looked at this like, oh my goodness, that is a beautiful, beautiful piece of red fur with a live edge on it. Some of you guys are, ooh, that's heavy, are giving me no peace over my shabby cross bracing there on the bench. It's, a lot of you guys told me that that is just substandard, even for a professional homeowner, that that's not up to par. And after reading all those comments, I have to agree. We might have to do something about that. The idea is to put this piece on here, secure it with some deck screws very low below the blade, and then very carefully rip that top off of there, which will be used for our finish. Now, when I brought the forklift in here to pick up that, that big billet, I think I may have rocked or moved that base. It might be sitting at an angle, not parallel with the blade. So I'm gonna resurface that real quick to make sure that we're flat with the blade. Then we'll put it on and see if we can't cut that.
a good thing that I resurfaced this. Here we were, I took about an eighth off and we ran out. This, this whole thing did shift probably half an inch or so. So I'll lower it down one more time and make a clean cut across here. You know, in looking at this, rather than bring that other piece over, I think we have essentially the same thing right here. This is, this would be quarter saw and we have a defect right there, but that's outside of our seven feet. Maybe we'll just take it out of this. We need seven feet. That puts us well outside of that defect right there. We have a small defect right here, but that's actually kind of interesting. It's a tight knot. I don't see how this is any different than the other plate piece, uh, apart from this one defect, which I don't care about. Plus, we can make it whatever width we want. Let's go ahead and just cut five quarter across here and pull this off here. I think this might be the piece. That is our finished piece. That uh, was a little bit more than 10 inches on that bark side there, but I'm not gonna keep the bark. This fur bark, I, I, I doubt that it's gonna stay on here uh, once it gets dry. Now this is wet. This is a little bit too wet to be making furniture out of. What I'm gonna do is uh, we'll take it up on the bench. We'll hand plane it smooth. We'll mount everything up, we'll put it up, and then it's gonna be in the house for about a year. Once that really settles in and, and dries, I can take it off, resurface it real quick, and then put a coating on it, uh, like a water locks or something. But we need something now. And I think this is gonna be perfect. This is gonna be pretty when we get the plane on here. As cool as it would be to leave this bark on here, it's just most likely going to fall off. But we do have that really pretty live edge there, that very organic look that can't be repeated with a machine that we want to preserve. So I was wondering if we couldn't just separate this. I think if we're really careful with our draw knife that we'll be able to preserve, preserve that really pretty live edge. There is something special to that. It just makes it look, you know, it's just something that you just can't buy. You know, it, it distinguishes itself. When you take that five quarter thickness, which is a, you know, an unusual or non-typical thickness, which you don't see, see that cambium on there? We want to get rid of that. 
with that, that live edge combined with a, that five quarter is a very nice combination. Several of you pointed out that I, I uh, drilled the wrong size holes for the hold fast. I drilled a one inch and I think you're right. I've noticed that they're not sticking very good. And when I, they worked pretty good on my other bench and those holes were, I think were seven eighths smaller. So I got a couple extra bits before we drill anymore. I'll, um, we'll test that out and find out what's the optimum size for that before we drill into the top. Uh, it just in the meantime, I'm just using my jet clamp. because we're going to trim it back here at seven. Let's get our best seven feet and find out where we're going to cut that out of here. First thing we need to do is to pick which side we want this on. Now we're going to cut that knot out of here. This is the better side. This is really gonna come alive when we put a hand plane on it. Now this was the bottom side that we cut. Here, which is, it has a knot here in the bottom that's gonna fall out, that's not visible on the other side. But it gives the live edge rolling towards the front. So I think I kind of prefer it the other way and the reason for that is it cast that, it's kind of that unknown behind it, kind of a shadow. It almost looks like a, a mountain range. I think we'll go with that. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sh shift that seven feet this way a little bit. Well, no, I'm not. I like, the dis I like the character, how this tapers down smaller. So, no, I'm not. I'm going to square this, mark our seven feet, wherever this comes out, that's where we're going to go. We don't want to lose that that tape, that taper in there, that looks nice. Double check the old field notes here. I've been, uh, my granddad always carried a little book around his back pocket. Handkerchief on the back left, little book on the back right with a small pencil for writing ideas and things down. I've started doing that, it's really handy. Here's that knife I was telling you guys about yesterday, the original Spyderco Bushcraft. Actually, this is not the original one. The original one was uh, burled maple, and the wood wasn't stable, and they all cracked around the rivets. And so they did a recall on them, sent it back, and they replaced it with, uh, I think it's the micarta. Yeah, I think it's micarta. I think that's what it was. But this is, sadly, no longer being made that I know of, but man, that is a, it's one of my favorite knives. I want to see how this planes. Let's plane the edge. You know, the argument could be made to leave the saw, the, the saw marks in it. You know, I like that look. It's a nice look. I might need to put one more hole for a seven footer in here. I don't know how clearly you can see the saw marks in here, but there's tiny little ledge there with overlap where the blade came in. Let's put a, 
Let's put a plane on it and see. Yeah, I think that's this. We need to get the saw marks out of here. Let's take a take a minute and do that. That's what a sharp plane does. Look at that. I'm just planing down until the saw marks are, are gone. Very light line, because we'll want to plane that off once we get the holes drilled. There it is, friends. I have to say that turned out pretty good. I think we should go install it. I think we have time to do that. But I like the way the antlers rise or are up above uh, the live edge. That looks good. The proportions are good. The colors are nice. I messed up. I gotta gotta come clean. I drilled two holes in the wrong spot right there and there. I was more focused on the. Uh, exposure of the camera and dealing with the sun than what I was doing and I got off my line so I'm gonna have to fill those um, with some some filler there but that's uh, that's what happened the rest of them are okay but we can fix that very very nice that pencil line is so light I don't think I need to take them back off uh, let's go let's take it in the house we'll get it installed and then we'll uh, finish up the video with uh, Mrs. W's reaction, see if she likes it. Hopefully she will. What do you think, Loaf? I think that's awesome. What's awesome? That paint is really cool, but I think those pipes are all mixed up. I think those have a the red and the green and the red and the green? The red and the light blue. Oh, the light blue, I guess it is. The red and the red are different. What are you happy about today? What's been good today? I'm happy to go for a walk. You and Mama got to go for a walk today? Sure. Well, I need some help putting this up. Can you give me a hand? What 
we're going to do is we'll hold it up and get it close, and then we'll measure equal distances off of this. Off of the wood. Off of the trim. Okay. And then uh, I'll get a nail in it, and I'll level it, and get another nail in it, and we should be good. Okay, what do you think? I think it's great. I think that red doesn't match at all, but I think it looks great. Do you like the live edge? I really like it, and I like the two by two. What do you think? Yeah, it's nice. I thought the live edge looked like a deer going over a, a horizon. And I quarter, it's quarter sawed, so you have the nice grain in it. So this will, this will really get pretty with it. I think you have to take the picture down. Get finished. It doesn't work for me. The picture? Yeah, it's too white. And the other stuff is really, you know, now it looks better. That looks much better. better. The white was too stark. These have a lot of warm, warm tones to them. Does that look better without that? Mm -hmm. It looks like a mountain. It looks like a hillside, doesn't it? Yeah. It's really wonderful. Woohoo! You got to take one hand. Okay. <laughs> Which one are you going to hang it on? Yeah. I'm going to have to put some lower ones for the sweet one. There. These were different than the original. These are, these are bigger. Yeah. Their ones are smaller. Like yeah, it looks very nice. Yeah.